ray tracing and empirical models. This is Dr. Ali Mugabel. Uh, let me recall what we have done so far and where are we in our roadmap. Um, we will do now general ray tracing and we'll look at in general quick review of our measurement based empirical propagation models including Okamura, Hata, cellular Wi-Fi, millimeter wave, indoor attenuation models. So we'll just touch on them and this is more of a reading material. Okay, let's take it from there. General ray tracing model. General ray tracing models include reflections, scattering, diffractions. And we're going to represent um, objects as small component particles and as if we have mirrors reflecting. So it requires side geometry. So to use ray tracing, you should know the geometry of the objects, dimensions, at least the basic objects, the main objects, and their dielectric properties. There are the good reflectors, weak reflectors. So this is easier than Maxwell equations. Uh, Compare geometry versus differential equations. Okay, so geometry is easier to deal with. Open computer packages are used. So we'll, we'll, we'll say that there is one ray going from here, reflected from the floor, getting back, another ray. So uh, it's like optical geometry. We have diffraction here. So we'll not, we'll not look at the details of the object, but rather we'll take the main path. So another reflection from this building, and of course, in addition to the main line of sight component that is between the transmitter and the receiver. And this kind of analysis, usually reflections generally dominate, of course, line of sight and then mid reflections. Other small components, uh, they are there, but they have less impact. So to do this, usually we have computer packages where we draw the geometry and insert objects. One of the, for example, uh, wireless insight is one example which models ray tracing. It could be indoor, outdoor. Um, we can have topographies and building and so on. There are companies that sell this uh, for the semi, for for uh, for the telecom companies. So they provide 3D maps. And of course, this kind of software can include multi path fading. There we can do indoor or outdoor analysis. This is the meaning of ray tracing. Where you where you uh, trace where you trace the rays within uh, or between the transmitter and the receiver. For more about this, you can read section 2.8 in our main reference. Uh, measurement based propagation models. We can say measurement based propagation models or empirical channel models. So uh, these models started with the early uh, cellular systems maybe the early, early late 80s or the early 90s. Empirical path loss models are there for early cellular systems, and they were based on extensive measurements. That people are doing measurement, measurement, and measurement, and then fit the models to them. There's Okamamura model, which is empirical, and it's based on different sites, uh, and it's based on the site and the specific frequency. So if you change the frequency or the site details, of course, uh, you get uh, different results. Then we have Hata models. Hata tried to come up with analytical approximation for Okamura. Then there is the COST-231 model, which extends Hata to higher frequency up to 2 gigahertz. It's a multi-slope model. And also we have uh, wolfish Bertoni model, which extends 238 to include diffraction. The small details are there, but you, maybe you will be hearing about Okamura, Hata, and cost functions. There's cost 207, cost 231, and the number changes from one application, one, one, one environment to another. Uh, for the case of cellular uh, systems, LTE, long term evolution, and 5G, with the development, there are detailed path loss models used for the user equipment, UE stands for user equipment, and for the base station. And these are the standards. By the way, 3GBB stand for third generation partnership project. TS is a technical specification. And uh, we have reports for that for different multipath delay spreads. We'll discuss uh, delay spreads uh, later on. So don't worry about it for now. We have different user equipment and MIMO antenna correlation. We can account for the correlation between the antennas. There are models for 5G, which includes high frequency up to 100 gigahertz. Now, for the case of Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi channel models, 
TGN and TGAC. That's TGN, by the way, stands for Task Group N or Task Group AC. And their task group to come up with the standards or the model appropriate for, for use. There is indoor, outdoor, path loss models with MIMO, 4x4, or even greater, four, four transmitters, four receivers, 40 megahertz channels, and even greater. And of course, the greater is for the TGAC. The one shown with the green is for the TGAC, and TGN is a standard 40 megahertz. Uh, those models account for different delay spread. As we mentioned, delay spread will be discussed later. But as you can see, that models get developed with the applications. For your reading, uh, if you want to use the same uh, reference book by Andre Goldsmith, uh, the 2020, 2020 draft, then you can use the, you can read the following chapters uh, to build up your knowledge on the standards and model used. Commonly used, these models are commonly used, especially the Wi-Fi for Wi-Fi system simulation cellular and Wi-Fi system simulations. So if you want to simulate a building, if you are not sure where to put the base station, you can, or you want to develop a technology, we can use this to feed them to computers and, and, and do some simulation. All right, so this is a quick review of the empirical channel models. Uh, I'm going here now to focus on the millimeter wave and other technologies. So I just want you to know that if you look at the spectrum, which is widely crowded, there are diff different technologies, including 5G cellular and 60 gigahertz spectrum YG, E-band. And we mentioned a few of these, but of course, I want you to know that uh, they, the change on the bandwidth would result on change on, on frequency. And there is section 2.9.5 about millimeter wave models. So if you want to focus on millimeter wave models, then uh, you can read that section. All existing commercial systems fit into a small fraction of this millimeter wave band. Uh, a comment about the propagation characteristics. When we say millimeter wave, it could mean different things, but usually we are interested from for high frequency, let's say from 60 to 100 gigahertz. For that new band, the channel models are immature. Uh, they are based on measurements and few accurate results are there few accurate analytical models, not much, so still it's a good area of research. Bath loss propagation is uh, huge compared to uh, lambda squared, not just lambda. So as you, of course, as you go into millimeter wave, the wavelength becomes small, smaller and smaller. And if you, if you, if you relate to the square, then you expect the bath loss to be huge. As you increase the frequency, the bath loss becomes huge. Also, we have other problems here. We have oxygen, oxygen and then we have uh, we have other rain absorption, uh, as uh, you can see here. This shows for you, for example, uh, the, this is a frequency and this is the attenuation. And you can see here that the absorption at some frequencies, as we increase, as we go, it's it's going to increase. And specifically at some frequencies, the attenuation is just dramatically high. So. In addition to the oxygen and, and, and the rain absorption, uh, lambda is in the order of the water molecule, uh, and that of course increases absorption. So millimeter wave is usually used with massive MIMO, multiple input, multiple output systems, because this multiple input, multiple output will stand for, will account for, uh, will account for the, the losses. So because we have lots of losses with the millimeter wave, so usually they come together, massive MIMO will, will kind of recover part of this loss. Now, just to give you an idea how they do the measurements and how do they medical, uh, med, uh, how do they come up with the empirical measurement models, uh, we can look at indoor attenuation models. So basically the way uh, it, it works, you, you, you fix your antenna uh, as a transmitter, TX, and then you take measurements here, there, and there as function of distance. But we don't take one point because we could be on the wrong multipath point. So usually we make a grid of points and we average out. The spacing between this measure point, of course, depends on the wavelength. We don't want to have uh, multiple wavelengths. You want to make sure that you take different. This is like a grid of 3x3 three three or 6x6. Six six. It depends on, a, on the variation. So we average this out, we, we come up with the following point, then we change the distance, we come up with the following point, 
and so on. So the following scatter plot shows you the long distance versus the received power in dB. Ideally, you'll get a, you can fit a straight line to this. So we will fit a model to the data. We'll come up with k. We'll come up with gamma related to the slope. And we'll get the best fits for uh, the dB case. Uh, we have uh, k is measured at a relative distance, which we call d naught. We have done this before, but just to recall. And we can solve for k and d naught and gamma from the measurement by minimizing the least square minimum mean square error. We can get the least square fit. Okay, so the exponent in is uh, MMSE estimate based on data, and this captures mean due to to shadowing. We can also find the shadowing variance of data relative to the, this path model straight line, as we can see, uh, this shown in red, with the minimum mean square error for gamma. We have done this. And I just want to recall that, for example, typically at 1 gigahertz, uh, the, these are some of the parameters that you expect for gamma. So once you come up with, with this, you have your model that you can represent. For example, here in the desert in Saudi Arabia, for example, you can have different parameters and if you if you want to use it for oil and gas uh, applications for wireless systems then you might need to do your own model to understand for example the impact of sound uh, sand dunes and so on okay so uh, this is about uh, fitting the parameters which i think we have done before uh, and come up coming up with the model Now this provides a summary for the entire thing that we have done. And I will do this quickly. Propagation characteristics include bath loss, shadowing, multi-bath. The ideal thing is to use Maxwell equations, but it's complicated. So we go into simpler issues. We started with the free space model. And then we went into the two-ray model. Third, we went into the ray tracing. Also, we discussed ray tracing at the end. We also looked at single, path, single slope bath loss exponent model. We looked at um, uh, the multi-slope path loss exponent model. We calculated the outage probability and, co and coverage. We looked at measurement-based and standard models. Uh, we looked at some details there about the accuracy and the user simulation. We also looked at millimeter wave path loss models. And we looked at them back to frame and oxygen there. And then we have also uh, looked at the large attenuation at, at very high frequency due to uh, rain and, and others. Now, uh, you can all, you can read the details and make up your own summary. But these are some of the main points there. So let's conclude this video with a question. Which of the following is false? Maxwell equations are complex and impractical in wireless communication channel, for wireless communication uh, channel modeling. In free space propagation model, power fall off uh, in free space propagation model powerful fall off proportional to lambda and to and to the square of the distance and the denominator and two ray model powerful of pro, uh, proportional to uh, the fourth power of d and ray tracing models require site specific information single slope bath loss exponent model captures main characteristics of shadowing which one of these is false please um, write in the comment section okay write your answer in the comment section